I want to dive into the performance charts and the performance section, section number five of the R22 POH. Um, there's a bunch of critical charts that we're going to need to know or be very, very familiar with, along with uh, some, some placard information inside of the helicopters. So like uh, you've seen in the previous video, this is the, the performance uh, sections, you know, first page talking about, okay, where can I find this stuff? So th this is helpful, you know, because it's tabbed in your, your POH and you can say, okay, performance, I need the out of ground effect hover for the beta 2 510 okay understand that in ground effect hover controllability has a sustained in 17 knots wind from any direction up to 9800 feet density altitude refer to hover performance charts for allowable gross weight you may get a, a question asked about you know it's uh, 22 knots so it's less than the 25 knot limitation but it's higher than the 17 knots uh, you know, that type of thing. So understand that there's going to be this fuzzy little gray area that you have to interpolate on the check ride. Okay. Um, performance data is presented in the section was obtained under ideal conditions. Performance under other conditions may be substantially less, meaning it may not be clear in a million. It may not be light and variable winds. It may be, you know, cloudy. It may be, you know, strong winds. So th there, there may be some fudge factor here. Okay, uh, hover performance data is given uh, with carburetor heat off. A full carburetor heat reduces hover ceilings by 2,000 feet, okay? Uh, indicated air speeds uh, shown on charts assume zero instrument error. Yeah. Uh, demonstrated operating temperatures. Uh, basically, here's a minimum <clears throat> and maximum. Uh, they talk about outside air temperature to 100 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level and 23 degrees uh, Celsius or um, whatever above ISA. I personally have flown a helicopter above 100 degrees. They don't fall out of the sky, but they become a, a dog in their, their performance. So... Uh, so here's airspeed uh, calibration curve. I've rarely ever used this, not even for check rides. Density altitude charts, you will see this on the written test. Uh, you're going to have to be able to interpolate. They'll give you a scenario like 15 degrees and uh, let's call it 3000 feet. Uh, what is our density altitude? You know, that type of thing. Um, so you're going to have to understand how to, to read those charts. Um, now, with the performance charts, the, the big thing I'm going to say is always, always, always make sure that you're you're looking at the correct chart. I can't tell you the number of times that I've opened up or seen students opened up and started doing the calculations on the wrong engine or the wrong airframe. So what I tell people is, is start at the top, read down. So it starts with in ground effect and then the next one's going to be out of ground effect. OK, in ground effect. For the beta two, okay, I'm using the right chart. Uh, in ground effect uh, for the the beta, all right, I'm in the right chart. You know, so be very sure about which chart. Now I'm going to talk about in ground effect on the beta two, and I'm just going to show you how the chart uh, works. Start at the bottom, so put in your your maximum gross weight, or put in what weight you're going to be at when you're doing the in ground effect hover. So in this scenario, let's say we're going to go up to land on a on a mountaintop, and it's going to be three thousand feet, and we're going to be at thirteen. 1950. We've burned off 20, uh, 20 pounds worth of fuel. And it's uh, kind of a warmer day. It's going to be uh, 20 degrees uh, Celsius. So we're right here at the, you know, the 1350 mark. And then we we look over and say, okay, we're going to be at 8,500 or so pressure altitude, so on and so forth. Can we do it? Yes, it's within. So the, the times that we can't do it is if we're falling outside of this, meaning if we're up at max gross weight and it's, you know, 20 degrees out, uh, but we need to go up to 10,000 feet. Obviously, we're, we're not going to be able to do that. So from 1350 up to, let's say, you know, 20 degrees, you know, our mountaintop landing better be less than 8,500 feet pressure altitude. Let's say we're at 1350 again, and we want to see if we can hold an in-ground effect hover at that uh, 8,500 feet. Well, already I can tell you that unless it's minus, you know, 50 degrees out or whatever, it's uh, even off the chart, we're not going to be able to to hold an out-of-ground effect hover. But what we can find out is this weight at 1350, uh, and it's going to be, you know, 20 degrees outside, 10 degrees outside, we're going to be able to do an out of ground effect hover all the way up until looks like 5300 maybe 5500 or so this uh pen that i'm using is is kind of you know hard to see because it's you know not as uh, not as precise but you get the idea so start down at the bottom and then work your way up 
be sure and, and verify what what chart you're looking at. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times that I've pulled out or I've had students pull out the wrong chart and start interpolating data. And there's gonna be some gotchas between the beta and the beta two. So keep in mind that. Now we're gonna talk about the height velocity diagram. This is the dead man's curve, the, the curve at which uh, you should not be uh, hanging out in. Even though as helicopter pilots, we oftentimes will get paid to do work in this area. Uh, know that you are accepting risk. Um, if you don't have enough altitude or enough airspeed, you and the helicopter may not survive. Now, I will say that this is demonstrated with smooth, uh, hard surface and the winds were calm and the RPM is up at 100, 304%. There's also something else. Um, Frank Robinson, when I went down to the Robinson uh, R22 safety school, one of the things they were talking about is this chart was developed with 1.1 seconds of delay, meaning the average pilot takes 1.1 seconds to realize that there's an engine failure and then to lower the collective. If you are Johnny on the spot, not that I'm advocating, you know, outside the, the bounds of the height velocity diagram, but there's a case to be made that if you can enter an auto rotation here at 300 feet and zero airspeeds, you may be able to, may be able to survive. But at this time you are E, you're preventing a for sure accident. So if you prevented a for sure accident, congratulations, pat yourself on the back, go buy a lottery ticket. But it's um, it's this uh, height velocity diagram is taking into account uh, pilots delayed for recognition of an engine failure. So know that. Anyways, I only bring that up as more G-Wiz information. Don't even bring that up in the exam, but that's more for you and, and me to understand how this uh, training scenario was, was done. Frank Robinson actually was uh, administering this in the R-22 and he wasn't the one doing it, but he was watching it and overseeing it. And they balled up a number of helicopters uh, figuring out where these numbers are. I won't say how many because I have no idea, but understand that these are kind of written in blood, but more written in money. Um, so know these, love these, learn these. Um, understand that at max gross weight, sea level, uh, 7,000 foot density altitude, there's going to be a, a kind of a different. Okay. So always, always, always remain in this recommended takeoff profile and, uh, and you should be good to go. Now, notice in the high velocity diagram, there's also this uh, curve down here, which is like less than let's call it 25 feet and uh, greater than 80 knots. You know, there's uh, suf insufficient altitude to allow you to allow the helicopter to, to settle for that 1.1 second and then the pilot to uh, flare uh, to get the, the altitude back. And there is a little dead man's curve down, uh, down here at high forward airspeeds. As much fun as it is uh, flying really close to the ground, less than 25, maybe 50 feet, be aware that, that you're playing with fire. So uh, anyways, height velocity diagram you're gonna know this love this learn this and you will be asked about this on the um, the check ride he may give you a scenario you're 200 feet and 40 knots are you safe no you're not you know 200 feet um, 60 knots are you safe well I'm right on the edge of the 7,000 foot but I'm at sea level so yes I'm outside so I'm safe you know that type of scenario uh, that is it for the uh, performance information be absolutely sure anytime that you uh, look at the performance charts you're looking at the correct chart that you don't wander off and look at some uh, R22 standard like I just did right learn from me learn from my mistakes and as always, like and subscribe if you want to learn more about the ins and outs of helicopters. My courses are designed just for you. Find them in the description below. And until next time.